Bismillahir Rahman Nir Rahim. Letters to Tahira. Tahira K. Nam Khatud. By G. A. Perwes. Translated by Mrs. Suraya Alvi. Preface. In the name of Allah, the Rahman, the Rahim. This book is the English translation of the Urdu book of the same name, written during the early 1950s by the great Quranic scholar of the subcontinent, Chaudhry Gulam Ahmed Perwes. Mr. Perwes's immense philosophical work is a realization of the desire of Alama Iqbal, the renowned Muslim visionary who developed and propagated a penetrating insight into the nature of Islam to study Islam not as a religion but as a deen, a word which has no parallel in Western languages. Mr. Perwes's studies on the meaning of deen forms the core of the present work, as well as his numerous treatises, lectures, discourses, and books, including his fascinating exposition on the Quran. In 30 parts. And his modern Quranic lexicon. In four volumes. His revolutionary writings and discourses have inspired a widespread intellectual movement in Pakistan both among the intelligentsia and the common people, and is increasingly influencing similar thinking in other countries. Letters to Tahira is essentially a collection of letters written to a mature and inquisitive young lady with clean intellect. This was in response to the queries the author had received from many of the female readers of his earlier similar book. Letters to Salim, which included a series of letters addressed to the youth of Pakistan and world at large. In this book, Mr. Perwes has written exclusively on various matters concerning Muslim girls and women. Particularly in the Indian subcontinent and, in a simple but effective way in the light of the Quran, has presented explanations and responses to their worries and concerns. There has been a demand from various circles that this book be translated into English for the English-speaking public in the subcontinent, and the world at large. This task was taken over by our sister in United States, Mrs. Saraya Alvi. The credit for the basic translation goes to her. The book was subsequently given to me for review. This was a very difficult task, to say the least. I had to take help from my friend and devoted student of the Quran, Bashir Ahmed Abid. Once the basic conceptual work was done, I was assisted by my colleague Aziz Mamaji, who helped me in streamlining and editing the text. The final draft was scrutinized by Munir Chughtai, a friend, well versed in Tuluhi Islam literature. I hope that the readers will like the work, and I pray that it may fulfill the purpose it was meant to serve. In the ensuing translation of Letters to Tahira, we have as far as possible, faithfully rendered into English the relevant Quranic verses. However, we have avoided giving the Arabic text. They can be referred to in the Quran by readers themselves. Also, the Urdu poetic stanzas that so effectively embellish Perwes's writings have been sparingly used. A few that could be freely translated have been attempted. The main objective of this exercise is to be faithful, as mentioned above, to the conceptual meaning of the text as Perwes delineated it. This book assumes that the reader has a general knowledge about Islam. For our non-Muslim friends, it is recommended that they study Islam. A Challenge to Religion, written in English by the same author, to understand the overall concept of Islam. You better Raman Kuwait, June 1996. In the name of Allah, the Raman, the Rahim. Introduction. The Quran tells us to nurture the upcoming young roots, if we want to reclaim or revive a downtrodden nation. If the rationale of our younger generations is properly guided and their desires and motives are channeled in the right direction, then a nation can certainly rejuvenate itself. Keeping this reality in mind, my foremost attention has been on the young generation of the nation. Whatever I have written is primarily for them. In this regard the letters to Salim are of special importance. Salim represents our educated youth who are eager to learn but who, through the wrong education which they get in our schools and colleges, in their minds have doubts and suspicions regarding Dean. The letters try to dispel these doubts in the light of scientific analysis, Quranic truth, and rational wisdom. As such, these letters prove to be quite effective and useful. 
A while ago, a dear friend of mine suggested that like the letters to Salim, I start a separate series called Letters to Tahira, which should especially deal with problems facing women. This suggestion proved so useful that after publishing the first letter, I received hundreds of letters from daughters and sisters all over the country appreciating and praising this new series. One of the advantages was that the questions asked covered a wide range of topics, and the rest of the letters published were then based mostly on these queries. There had been a demand for some time that a collection of letters to Tahira be published, like its predecessor book Letters to Salim. This book is thus a response to that demand. First I considered including all these letters in one volume, but later I felt that there are other vital matters that should necessarily form a part of such a collection. When thinking of other material for inclusion in the book, the need of collating all such Quranic directive that particularly concern women, was highlighted. These are now presented in this book, under different headings, so that whenever needed one could easily look up the required reference. I have arranged all these laws for easy reference, but while this has enhanced the usefulness of this collection, it has resulted in a thick volume. I, therefore, have had to divide it into two volumes. These letters bring forth the trials, tribulations, and those vexing problems that the unfortunate and helpless girls of our society have to face today. The solutions to such problems have been presented in the light of the Quran. The solutions to these are obviously applicable to the society does not correct itself, one cannot get satisfactory solutions to these difficulties. In fact, there are two effective ways of making a just society. Firstly, the education in our schools and colleges should be based on the correct lines and secondly, the laws of the land should be formulated in the light of the Quran. For this purpose it is necessary to awaken public opinion to such an extent that the changes can be effected in a constitutional manner. Through a study of these letters it will be evident that the laws about marriage and divorce, as formulated by the so-called Sharia, are often quite contrary to Quranic teachings. Quite often the prevalent Sharia directives, which are sometimes used in legal judgment, contain violations of the Quranic concepts. We are Muslims and our conviction about the Quran is that it is a complete code of life given to us by Allah. Therefore, anything that goes against the Quran cannot be correct. What we need is to bring our Sharia to completely conform to the Quran, and this can be done by applying the approach mentioned above. Some letters highlight those maladies that are currently rampant amongst our modern educated class. These are the results of following the West blindly. The nation is gradually being pushed towards destruction, and if the orthodox section of the society needs to change, the modernists, too, are not to be exempted. If the former is a patient of paralysis, the latter has had a stroke. It is imperative that both extremes be brought to the middle path, in the light of the Quran. Sex is a very important subject because it is deeply linked with civilization and the culture of a nation. Precious little has been written about this subject, and so I want to talk about this in a manner which explains its importance. With this aim in mind, a research paper on this subject has been included in the second part, which explains why the Quran emphasizes chastity and the purity of thought and deed. It is a fact that women can train a society more easily and effectively than men. Society consists of an aggregate of different families, and it is a woman who can effectively and beautifully set her home right. The publishing of these letters will hopefully initiate the reformation process at home. If this effort of mine can light a few Quranic candles in some homes, I believe my endeavors will have borne fruit. To those sisters who want to start elementary Quranic education in their homes, I would suggest to them my book Islami Muashrat which is available in English from Tului Islam Trust, under the title Islamic Way of Living. Children should be made to study it, lesson by lesson, and then be encouraged to practice it accordingly. This book, in an easy and attractive style, portrays Quranic guidance on aspects that concern our everyday life. Thereafter, girls can go on to study Tahira Kaynam and both male and female college students can read Salim Kaynam. These will give their thinking an Islamic foundation. Finally, 
I should emphasize that I would love to satisfy any doubt or answer any question regarding any subject discussed in these letters. For me, every girl of our nation is my daughter Tahira. Perwes. January 1957, Karachi, 2nd edition. Talu Islam Trust. 25B, Gulberg 2. Lahore, Pakistan. Talui Islam at gmail.com.